Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about running either a high voltage power system or running a high current power system. Which one would you happen to choose? Now we're going to answer this in sort of like a two part answer where the first one, the first part is going to be quite simple. And then the second part is really what I want to be talking about. That's the main focus of this video. And that's going to be our part two. So that's what we'll end up doing. First, we'll talk about kind of the scope of what we're talking about here. So ultimately what we are saying here is if we have a 6S battery pack and we are going to draw 60 amps from this, we can actually get the same amount of power from a 3S battery pack running at double the current or 120 amps. This is gonna work out to about the 1300 watt mark for both of these uh, power systems. So this is ultimately what we are comparing. Do we want to go with that higher voltage setup or do we want to go with the higher current setup? So let's talk about the first part to our answer here today. When we're talking pretty general where you do not have any limitations within your power system, you have the freedom to choose whatever you want and you are very new to selecting power systems, it can be easier safer and more reliable to choose a high voltage power system. So that's all I'm gonna say for that quick answer. Now for the rest of us out there, there is a different answer that I'm gonna provide you with. And that answer is you can actually achieve all of the things that we just mentioned in either scenario. You can achieve excellent reliability, a very simple setup, if you make sure you are selecting the correct components in order to match which one you choose. So if you go ahead and choose a high voltage setup, you'll wanna make sure, of course, you know, here's state the obvious that you're picking all the components that match that specific voltage. On the other hand, if you go and select that power system with a high current setup, you want to make sure, you know, just like you did with a voltage setup, you want to have all of the components matching that high current setup. Now, there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about with this being said. And one of them is a lot of people get into trouble with a high current setup because of a couple different reasons. And that is Primarily, when power systems blow up, there's two main reasons for that. One of them is the incorrect amount of load has been placed on that power system, thereby overloading it and having to fail the components on that power system. The second reason, believe it or not, is going to be the battery selection. An incorrectly selected battery can wreak havoc on your power system. We have a video that we've made previously that kind of talks about that in the power system side of things. So when you have components that are failing and you get to the root cause, which is identified as too much current going through the power system, this is where the voltage option is gonna look a little bit better because you don't have these typical failures when you're going for a higher voltage power system. Typically what you would do with a selection when you're kind of mapping out the scenario of going with a higher voltage setup is you'd pick your components right away with that specific voltage. So you go ahead and you pick your batteries. It's, let's say it's a 10 or 12S setup. And then you go ahead and you pick your high voltage speed control. And maybe it's only an 80 amp speed control. And then you go ahead and you select your motor. And that motor is a lower KV in order to match that higher voltage that you're gonna feed to your power system. So in general, when you have that type of setup, Voltage, you can't really get wrong. You get that 10S, 12S setup and your ESE may have a maximum of 12S. You, you can expect that you're not gonna go and destroy or kind of exceed that threshold. You're not gonna all of a sudden get the voltage of a 14S battery pack because it doesn't exist. Now, when you go for the high current setup, this is where things get a little bit um, skewed. You go ahead and you place the load on your motor and that motor actually pulls more current than you actually were able to predict. So that kind of moves into our other point where we're, if you're going for that high current setup, you have to be careful to some degree because the predictability of current is not as effective as the predictability of the voltage when you feed that to the system. So something to keep in mind when you're going down this route. So let's talk about the factors that affect your decision to choose either a high voltage setup or a, a high current setup. So there's three primary factors that do sort of affect your decision. And the first one is the racing specifications. Now, if you race in a class, I did, we had limitations on the amount of voltage that we could run in a specific class. So if you have a voltage restriction, 
and you don't have a current restriction, then what are you gonna do? You're gonna go for that top voltage, you're gonna pick that exact battery that maxes out that specification, and then you're gonna try and play with the amount of current. Now, our limitation was not on current, it was actually on the battery packs. We could only run of that specific voltage up to 10 amp hour. That was the full limitation. So of course, what did we do? We tried to max that out as best as we possibly could. Go with a 10 amp hour battery pack and the voltage spec. Now, when you do that, the only way that you get more power out of that system is by pushing the current up as high as you possibly can go. And you're definitely testing the limitations between load and the amount of current that you're pulling out of that setup. So you need to make sure that everything is matched correctly. And if you do that correctly, when you pick your power system, you will end up with a very reliable power system. There's nothing wrong with this type of setup as long as you pick up, pick your components correctly. Now the second factor that could influence your decision is the cost of the specific components. Now, when we're talking about a setup up to 6S, that setup up to 6S is most likely limited to the electronic speed controls that exist on the market today. They typically go up to about 6 or 8S and then any any sort of voltage increase from there, you're moving into the high voltage electronic speed control when you want to achieve that, you know, 8 to even 12S type setup. This is going to be in a completely different price bracket to move into these types of electronic speed controls. Another thing to point out is the brushless motor. Brushless motors to get down to a lower KV is also somewhat difficult. In order to stretch down into the lower KV, brushless motors, you may actually have to increase the size of your motor in order to get that KV low enough, or what you have to do is look for a, a specific motor that has a high number of windings. So these are the two things that you're able to look at. These do limit your choices when you're looking at these types of motors. They can influence the amount of total cost of your setup. Now the third item that I wanted to talk about is there's no actual physical advantage when it comes down to weight when you're looking at a battery pack that is, let's say a perfect example is a 6S setup running 100 amps or so. So let's assume that it's a 45C battery pack in an electric ducted fan jet. Now, why would you select the 6S 5000 milliamp hour battery pack instead of going with like an 8S and getting that current down? Well, I said at the beginning of this, this uh, point here is that there is no real physical advantage that you're gonna get in terms of weight savings or even the physical size of the battery pack. When you go to that 8S battery pack, now you're gonna have to reduce the size of the battery pack because you're adding two extra cells. In order to get the equivalent of a 6S 5000 milliamp hour battery pack, you're gonna have to look at a, an 8S battery pack that is of 3750 milliamp hour. So you can see the difference. The capacity is actually significantly reduced. And what does that do to your overall current draw? It also reduces it. So really you have a battery pack, two battery pack scenarios that can provide the exact same power output. And I have a chart here that you can see what I'm talking about. Both those battery pack setups are identical in the total amount of power output that they provide. So in conclusion, when you have the choice of going with a high voltage setup, or a low voltage setup, the best way to approach this is to match what you need to do in your RC application. If going with a 6S setup allows you to, you know, spend the money on electronic speed control that's within that 6S limit and you have to pull upwards of 100 amps, there are components out there on the market that will allow you to do that safely. If you would prefer to go with a higher voltage setup in 810S, that works too. Just Pick your components correctly and you will always end up with a safe, reliable power system. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. And thank you for watching.